This study was part of a larger collaborative effort amongst researchers from Kaiser Permanente Northern California, the University of California, San Francisco, Johns Hopkins University, the CDC, and the University of Pennsylvania. The overall objective of the study was to examine variation in care amongst patients with inflammatory bowel disease. The study was supported by a research grant from the CDC to the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America. Relatively little research has been done in the field of variation of care within inflammatory bowel disease. Measuring variation in care is important for several reasons. First, it can demonstrate uh, difference in outcomes at many levels, such as at national levels, state levels, or even between medical centers or physicians. Importantly, where there's variation in care, there's also the potential opportunity to identify optimal treatment regimens. Our research team has previously demonstrated variation in several care measures within the Kaiser Permanente system. For example, we've demonstrated variation in use of thiopurines and infliximab between the different medical centers within the health system. In this study, we examined the use of thiopurines and how these patients were monitored for bone marrow suppression within the Kaiser Permanente system. Thiopurines are a particularly challenging medication to use because of the risk of severe bone marrow suppression. This study included nearly 2,000 patients who were new initiators of thiopurine therapy for their inflammatory bowel disease. We then looked at the frequency of monitoring blood counts, which has previously been recommended to be completed once a week for the first four weeks, every other week for approximately eight weeks after that, and then every one to two months during the subsequent course of therapy. We also looked at the incidence of severe bone marrow suppression as measured in terms of leukopenia, or suppression of the total weight count, neutropenia, suppression of the neutrophil count, and thrombocytopenia, suppression of the platelet count. Lastly, we examined the medical records to determine outcomes of those patients who had severe bone marrow suppression. Among the 1,997 patients included in the study, we observed that uh, monitoring of the blood count was far less frequent than what has been recommended. For example, during the first four weeks of therapy, the median number of blood counts measured was two. In the first eight weeks, it was three. And during weeks nine to 26, the median number of blood counts measured was only one. We also observed that the incidence of bone marrow suppression was the most common in the first eight weeks of therapy. For example, approximately one in 200 patients developed uh, severe leukopenia and approximately one in 300 patients developed severe neutropenia during the first eight weeks of therapy. Essentially, all of these patients had a normal white blood count at least one point before developing severe bone marrow suppression after having started therapy with thiopurines. Interestingly, those patients who developed severe bone marrow suppression were more likely to have uh, a, significant, a more significant decrease in their white blood count on the first measurement after starting therapy. For example, of those patients who developed severe neutropenia, there was an average of a 17% reduction in the white blood count on the first measurement. In comparison to the patients who did not develop severe neutropenia, there was a 2% increase in the white blood count on the first measurement after starting therapy. All the patients who developed severe bone marrow suppression were ultimately hospitalized, most with evidence of infection. However, there were no deaths amongst the patients within this study. There are several take-home points from the study. The first is that severe bone marrow suppression is perhaps more common than we expect and occurs most often in the first eight weeks of therapy. This identifies the time when the most frequent monitoring uh, would likely be useful. We also observed that mild leukopenia was common after the first eight weeks of therapy and did not appear to portend the same likelihood of severe bone marrow suppression. Therefore, for those patients who develop mild leukopenia during the first eight weeks of therapy, it would be recommended to immediately discontinue therapy and consider reinitiating therapy once the blood count had normalized, but at a lower dose. For those who develop mild leukopenia later in the course of therapy, it's an individual decision as to whether or not to discontinue therapy and or lower the dose, but frequent remonitoring makes sense. Lastly, we would note that monitoring patients' blood counts 
while initiating thiopurine therapy is obviously a significant challenge and takes a major commitment on the part of both the patient and the physician. We hope that physicians will find these data useful when initiating thiopurine therapy for their patients and counseling them on the need for frequent blood count monitoring, particularly during the early course of therapy.